Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, like as always, I've got a lot of gaming related news for you guys. But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit the subscribe button and let's get started. The first news of the day is coming from Blizzard. Earlier this week, many reports suggested that the next hero for Overwatch 2 will be named Kimiko and it is a fox girl. The report indicated that new hero would be a healer and will have abilities related to her fox. According to the leaker, with her ability, Kamiko could help her allies by providing healings and reducing damage from enemy. The leaker also revealed her ultimate ability and they said that Kimiko could summon a giant nine-tailed fox as her ultimate ability, which will prevent enemy attacks. The rumors and leaks were believed to be true after a concept art and image was leaked of the next hero, and the image showed Kimiko holding her own sort of weapon and a blue fox on her shoulder. But all the rumors and leaks were squashed by Blizzard. Over on competitive Overwatch subreddit, after the image was posted, Blizzard commercial leader and VP John Spector commented that the alt is cool but this is fake. He also said normally they don't comment on things like this but he wanted to make an arrow to Joe. The rumors also got strong as we still don't know anything about the blue little fox that appeared in the release date reveal trailer. Blizzard also confirmed that when Overwatch will launch in October, it will replace the current live service for the first Overwatch game. On to the next news and it's about the upcoming survival horror game State of Decay 3. It was spotted by WCCF Tech and they reported that Xbox Game Studios had Mad Booty was a guest on a recent Xbox's Major Nelson podcast where he revealed some details related to the game. During this podcast, Booty revealed that Undead Labs is working with their Gears of War studio in Vancouver. Mad Booty also revealed that the studio is using some technology around the Unreal Engine 5 and they are trying to bring some stuff that was in Gears of War to State of Decay 3. Elsewhere, Mad Booty also said that last week before last, they spent all the day at the Undead Labs in Seattle getting the update on State of Decay 3. He also said that the State of Decay 2 continues to growing and the game hit 11 million lifetime players. Mad Booty went ahead and also said that all the stuff they are doing there on State of Decay 2 is really the test bed proving grounds for all the stuff that's going in State of Decay 3. State of Decay 3 was announced over two years ago back in 2020 during Xbox and Bethesda showcase. During that time, developer Undead Lab said that the game is still in pre-production, but five months ago, some reports came out suggesting that there have been some development issues and the game is still in pre-production. The next news is coming from GSC Game as the developers confirm that Stalker 2 has not faced another delay. According to XGP, Xbox recently started to refund the pre-order for the Stalker 2 game with a note that says that the game has been pushed back to an unconfirmed date. The game is no longer available for pre-order over on Xbox Store, but you can still early purchase the disc copy of the game from retailers like Amazon and for PC, the game is still available for pre-order on Steam. GSC Game World's spokesperson talked about this with PC Gamer and said that they had to push back Stalker 2 to 2023 with no exact release date as of now. They made the announcement at the E3 Microsoft Extended Showcase alongside the dev diary and intro cutscene. He also said that Microsoft refunds pre-orders for the games that have no release date. When they will announce the new release date, the pre-orders will go live again for Xbox. He also mentioned that PC pre-orders from Steam, EGS and GOG are not affected by this. The Stalker 2 was originally scheduled to release on 28th April 2022 and then later it got delayed to 8th December 2022. The next news is related to the Dying Light 2. Last month, during the Gamescom opening night live, Techland revealed the first story focused DLC for Dying Light 2 which is named Bloody Ties. And recently, the lead designer of Dying Light 2, Timon Smectala, had a conversation with Games Radar where he talked about the DLC. After announcing the Bloody Ties DLC, it received a mixed review from the fans as many didn't like Gladiator themed DLC and they think it will be an arena where players will fight waves of enemies. Timon Smectala revealed that Bloody Ties DLC has a chunky story that will take players 5 to 6 hours to complete. 
Smectala also revealed that there are two big side quests players can follow which will change the main narrative of the main DLC story. Smectala also said that there are many small side quests that won't affect the main story. Smectala later talked about how the DLC will start and he said that the DLC start in the original Dying Light 2 map and later it will take players to a new map. The new map will have a main building with some surroundings and the main building would be a carnage hall where players will fight enemies in human versus human combat. The Bloody Ties DLC is scheduled to release on the 13th of October 2022. The next news is coming from one of the best football simulation games, Football Manager. The developer Sports Interactive confirmed that the next installment of Football Manager will be out on November 8 on PC. And if you pre-order the game, you will have early access to the game for about 2 weeks. Although the announcement video didn't confirm any new features for the game, but it showed some stats from the player base, like how many matches were played in FM22 and the winning percentage, the player who won the most golden boot and many more. The trailer video also confirmed that FM23 will have the German League Bundesliga license, although the developers didn't confirm it, but on the trailer video, UEFA Champions League was branded. So there is a chance that FM23 will have Champions League licensed as well. FM23 will also be the first FM game that will launch for PlayStation. And FM Touch is also returning for ISO devices thanks to the new deal with Apple Arcade. The PC version of the game is available on Steam, Epic and the Microsoft Store with a 20% discount up until it launches. The developers also confirmed that the players save in the pre-order early access will carry over to the game when it will launch. There are also some changes to how FM23 will be packaged as the publisher removed almost everything physical from the physical edition. If you order a physical edition of FM23, you won't get a physical disc. Instead, you'll get a code for the game and also they removed the manual for the game as well. The next news is coming from Star Citizen. As the game is free to play for some time, Star Citizen currently celebrating a free fly event which makes the game free to play until September 16th. Star Citizen hosts this free fly event frequently to celebrate certain milestones and community events or to give new players a chance to try out their game before they invest in their project. Players can download Star Citizen from their website for free, but to access the game players have to buy ships or starter packs which can cost upwards of thousands of dollars. The current free fly event is allowing players to redeem 8 ships for free until September 16th and the starter packs of the game are also at a discount. So after trying the game for free, if anyone wants to buy it, they can do it. The ships that are free to play are the $600 Karak, the $475 Origin 600i, the $325 Aegis Redeemer, the $260 Crusader Mercury, the $240 RSI Corpius, the $125 Argo Raft, the $70 Aegis Avenger Titan, and the $60 Anvil C8X Pieces. In total, the 8 ships will cost you $2,155 if you want to buy all of them. Star Citizens faced many controversies for their high-priced ships for a game that is still incomplete and in an early alpha state. Star Citizen has been in development for 11 years now and the game is most crowdfunded game of all time as it raised over $400 million over the course of its development. The final news of the day is coming from Ubisoft Forward 2022 showcase. And it was a wild show as Ubisoft decided to rebuild not one but four Assassin's Creed games. Just last week, there was some leak related to the next Assassin's Creed game. And we got to know the next Assassin's Creed game could be set in Baghdad and the name could be Mirage. And during the Ubisoft Forward Showcase, just before announcing the Valhalla last chapter, we got to see a trailer for the next Assassin's Creed game and it is Mirage. Mirage will cover four districts of 9th century Baghdad and it looks like Ubisoft is taking the Assassin's Creed series back to its roots. As many reports claim that all the Assassin's Creed game that was announced won't be like Origin, Odyssey and Valhalla. Instead, it would be a modern intake of old style Assassin's Creed games. Mirage currently has a release window of 2023 and the game will release for PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and Xbox One. And if Mirage wasn't enough, Ubisoft then revealed another Assassin's Creed project 
and this time we are going to China. Ubisoft only revealed the codename for the game and didn't reveal the release window. The codename is Jade and Jade won't release for PC or it won't be a PlayStation or Xbox exclusive game as it will be Ubisoft's first ever open world Assassin's Creed game for mobile devices. And Jade will also let players create their own Assassin's Creed characters and you can parkour in the Great Wall of China. And after that Ubisoft announced two more Assassin's Creed projects and again they only revealed the code name for the games. Assassin's Creed Red will finally take us to Japan and it will be developed by the Odyssey developer Ubisoft Quebec. And then we got to see the creepiest Assassin's Creed game reveal of all time. Assassin's Creed codenamed Hexer reveal trailer feature dog barking, rotting trees and real dark vibes. And Ubisoft said that Hexer will be different than any other Assassin's Creed game and it will be developed by Ubisoft Montreal. This is all the news I've got for today. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit the subscribe button for more gaming related content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, goodbye.